don't know how it is you looked at me and saw the person that I could be. my fingers. <sighs> Pastor Jeff, what, what, what are you doing? Why are you dressed like that? Didn't you notice how cold it is in here? Yes, I noticed how cold it is. The question is, why? Why what? <sighs> why is it so cold? Oh, because the professor said in his book, and, and, and I quote, <clears throat> there it is. Ah, see, it says, it says termites don't like the cold, see? So you decided to turn the clubhouse into a freezer? That's the idea, Pastor Jeff. Hey, you want to have a snowball fight? No, no, no. no what I really could use is a coat. Oh. Oh, hey, I can help you with that one. Hey, here, step right there. Oh, it's cold. Here, oh. try this on. Okay. All right. Oh, feeling better already. There you already. go. Oh. Nice and cozy, oh. yeah? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get into the puck. Puck. Why is there a banana peel in the pocket and... Why does this thing smell so bad? Ooh. Oh, that's probably because I found it in a dumpster in the way here. Yeah. What? Yeah, I had to peel a diaper off. It was like... Oh, oh. No, no, no. That, that's it. No, no. Cassie, Jeff, you're going to freeze! I, I would rather be cold than wear that thing. 
so, so is this cold thing working? Oh, yeah, let me find out. Hold on. Shh. Okay. Okay. Shh. Okay. Okay. I don't believe it! What? They, I can still hear them eating. I, I guess they like frozen dinners. So, so can we at least turn the heat on since this isn't working? All right, fine. Pretty please? There, I turned the heat back on again. It should start warming up any minute now. Okay. Don't worry, Pastor Jeff. I, I, I know the cold thing didn't pan out the way I wanted to, but there's plenty of other things in the book here that we could try. Oh, here's one that we... No, no, I, I don't like that. It's just a... Oh, go, this is a good one. We, no, no, I don't like that one either. It's, uh, it might burn my skin. I, I'd say... Uh, oh, here's a good one we haven't tried yet. This is perfect. And the, oh, wow, it is starting to get warm in here now, isn't it? Oh, I got a jacket on, my gloves in it. Hold on for a minute. I got to take some of this stuff off. Wait a minute. What? You're wearing two coats? Well, yeah, why? All this time I've been sitting here freezing and you've been wearing... Two coats? Well, Pastor Jeff, I, I, I was cold. <laughs> you were cold. Yeah. Hey, good morning boys and girls, and welcome to week number three in our series, Eat It, where we're learning how to be self-feeders in the Word of God. Man, it's so exciting to hear all the good things about God's Word, because God's Word is there to feed you, to build you up, to encourage you, to strengthen you, so you can be more and more and more like Jesus. Today, we're going to talk about the fact that God's Word is like light. And to do that, we're going to look at four verses found in Psalm 119. And the first one is found in Psalm 119, verse 130, which says this. It says, the teaching of God's word gives light. So even the simple can understand it. The teaching of God's word gives light. So even the simple can understand it. Well, what does light do? Light is kind of cool. Light brightens everything up. Light makes it clear. What do you do when you're walking at nighttime from one room in your house to another? You reach in and you turn on the light switch, right? You flip it on and then you can see everything in the room. If you were to walk around that room without the lights on, you might bang into things and stumble and fall and that wouldn't be good. But light makes things clear. Light gives you the ability to see something or to understand it. And the Bible is like that. The Bible is there to make your life clear and simple and easy to understand. In fact, the last part of that verse says, even the simple can understand it. So the Bible really is so simple. Even a child can do it. Anybody can obey and follow the word of God. It's just a matter of wanting to do so. So the first verse we looked at this morning is Psalm 119 verse 130, which tells us that God's word gives us light and anybody can operate and act on and follow that light. The second verse we're going to look at is in Psalm 119, 105, which says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Have you ever been lost? Like maybe you're walking through the woods at night and you didn't know your way. And you might be using one of these. You know what this is, right, boys and girls? This is a flashlight. Well, the Bible says that the word of God is a lamp unto your feet. It shows you where you're at. It lets you know where you're at right now. And it's a light unto your path. It shows you where you are and where you're going. And if you've ever been lost, that's really scary because you kind of know where you are. You think you know where you are, but you really don't know where you need to go and you're really not sure how to get there. Well, the Bible tells us, the Bible will show you where you're at in your life, how you're doing, how things are going, 
and it will show you how to get to the next place God wants you to be. It'll show you how to move from where you are to the next step where God wants you to be. It's kind of like when you go to the mall, you know, if you've been, if you go to a mall and you've never been there before, when you walk in the entrance, there's these big, huge signs which has a map of the mall on it. And let's say that you wanted to go to um, the Disney store and you're not sure how to get there. Well, as you walk in the door, you look at the map and you find the Disney store on the map and then it shows you, X marks the spot of where you are at the entrance and what the path is to get there. The map makes it clear. It gives you a clear way to show you where I'm starting at right now and how to get to the Disney store where I want to be. And it's almost like your mom's GPS in a car. You know, when your mom and dad are driving, like when I drive over to Danbury, I use a, a GPS. You know, that little thing in your car that says, turn left in 0.5 miles. Turn left in 500 fleet. Turn left now. And then if you miss the turn, it says recomputing, recomputing, or recalculating, and it tells you how to go in a different direction. Well, the GPS, GPS system or, or the God's you know, goof, goof proof system, if you will, that shows you what you're doing. It tells you how to move your car from where you are in West Haven and drive it all the way over to Danbury. And if for some reason you make a mistake and you don't go the right way, guess what? It'll show you that. It'll say, oh, stop. You made a mistake. Turn it around. Do the things differently. Go in a different direction. It helps you to change directions. It helps you to change your course while at the same time keeping you on course, keeping you on track. And the Bible does all those things. The Bible shows you where you are in life, how you're doing. As you read it, it's reading you and saying, hey, you're doing this really good. Or, hey, you need to fix that a little bit. And it also kind of encourages you and say, you know, you're doing really good here, but this is the next thing you need to do. This is the next step you need to take. And when maybe you're not doing so good, maybe you're doing some things that are wrong or some things that aren't helping you or helping others, guess what? It'll say, ah, I wouldn't do that. I would go in this direction. I would change and go over here. The Bible is amazing because not only does it, does it show you and give you understanding, but it shows you where you are and where you need to go. And our third scripture today is this. It's in Psalm 119, verse 11, which says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You see, when you hide God's word in your heart, it keeps you from making bad choices and going off in the wrong direction and doing things that will hurt you or others. Just like when your mom is driving the car, if it says turn left, and she turns right, but there's no turn right. There's just a big rock there. If she does that, the car's going to crash and everybody's going to get hurt. Well, the Bible says that if you follow what it says, if you do what it says, guess what? It'll always point you in the direction. It'll always keep you protected. It'll always keep you safe. Now, let's talk about this idea of hiding God's word in your heart. You're not hiding the word from God and you're not hiding the word from yourself. It's kind of like a, a squirrel in the winter. He stores up all those nuts so he can pull them out throughout the winter to eat when there's nothing on the ground. You're hiding the word of God in your heart so that when you need that word of God, God can remind you of it and pull it up. When you're about to do the wrong thing inside your heart, you can hear, eh, eh, I wouldn't do that. The Bible says, and you got, ooh, okay. Or, you're thinking about doing something, but you're not sure if you should do it. You're a little scared. You, know, you want to go say hi to somebody or be kind to somebody or share something with somebody. You're, I'm not sure if I should do that. The Word of God will say, well, you know, the Bible says, be kind to one another. You go ahead and do that. And it'll encourage you and it'll move you along. It reminds you of what's been taught you. It reminds you what you've already learned. And it shows you that, yes, this is the way to go. And no, that's not the way to go. But even more important than that, the most special thing about hiding God's word in your heart is that it keeps you close to God. Which brings us to our final and fourth scripture in Psalm 119, which is verse 165, which says this, Great peace have those who love God's word, and nothing can make them stumble. You see, if you love God, you'll spend time with God. And the way to spend time with God is to spend time in his word. Because it's the Bible that tells us what God thinks and feels about us. And it's the Bible that shows us who God is and how amazing and great he is. And when you do that, when you spend time hiding God's word in your heart from our last point, and you do that because you love God and you want to spend time with God, guess what? You won't stumble and fall. You won't make mistakes. You won't make bad choices. Because we've, we've said to you already, when you're about to do the wrong thing, the Word of God will speak from inside your heart. That's why you put it there. It'll come up from inside your heart and go, 
I wouldn't do that. The Bible says this. Or if you're not sure about something, uh, I would do that. That's the right way to go. The Bible will help you make the right choices. And it'll help you avoid getting in trouble and making bad ones. It'll keep you from stumbling. Let's just kind of close with this example today. Think about it. You're at home and you're playing your video games or you're on your cell phone. You're watching your favorite T-show. You're doing something T-show, TV show. You're doing something you absolutely love. And your mom says, Susie, I need you to clean your room. Or Johnny, I need you to take out the trash. Or Jeremiah, I need you to walk the dogs. At that moment, you have a choice to make. You might be so busy playing your video games or texting or whatever you're doing that you're like, Oh, Ma, I don't want to do that. But is that the right thing to do? Is that a God thing to do? Is that the way God wants you to be? Remember, God puts everybody else first because he loves and he puts himself last. So that probably wouldn't be the right way to go. In fact, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6.1, it says, Children, obey your parents because it's right. It's the right thing to do. So at that moment when you're feeling like, oh, I don't want to do it, and you're like, no, I'm not going to do it. Inside your heart, you'll, hear, you'll say, Jeff, you're supposed to obey your parents. It's the right thing to do. And then that'll help you make the change. It'll help you from making a really bad mistake because you and I both know if you do not obey your mother or do not obey your father, sooner or later, it's going to come back and you're going to get in trouble, right? But if you immediately get up and walk the dog or immediately take out the trash or clean your room, then you get that done and you have more time to play your video games, more time to do the fun because guess what? You quickly and willingly did what you're supposed to do. You obeyed God and obeyed your mom and dad and did what was right. And then behind that will come blessings. So guys, understand that the Word of God is a lamp to your feet. It's a light into your path. It gives you clarity and understanding. It shows you where you are and where you're going. It's something you need to stick in your heart so you don't get into trouble and you don't get into falling and you don't stumble. And when you do that, you'll have peace with God and you'll fall more and more in love with God. And at the end, you'll act more and more like Jesus. So remember, our big answer today and the one we want you to know for this week is this. I eat God's word because it shows me where I am and where I'm going. So this week, go out and practice the word of God and become more and more like Jesus. And remember, as we always say around here, stay safe be well. We love you very much. And if you're not here with us today, we miss you. But Jesus, he loves you most of all. Have a great week. Here's what I want you to do. Simply pick a challenge. You can do one, two, or three, and then do it. And then send me an email at jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, at verticalct.com, jeff at verticalct.com, and tell me what the challenges you did, what your name is, and how you did to practice and act on it this week. And then I will send you an email back giving you four points. And if you want to say the memory verse online, just send me a video of you saying the memory verse. And again, I'll give you those four points. But even better, even cooler, why not do the challenges this week and then show up here at church on Sunday where we can talk face to face and you can tell us about the challenges that you did and you can say the memory verse and we can award you the points. We would love to have you come. So don't forget, we're going to have challenges each and every week and you can do those challenges to earn points towards prizes here at Vertical Kids.